girls during his years working at the BBC. Uh, let's get some reaction now. Joining us live from central London is the founder of the charity Childline, Dame Esther Ranson. Uh, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Uh, we heard Dame Janet Smith earlier talking about the report making sorry reading uh, for the BBC. What's your reaction to her findings? Well, absolutely. Um, it's uh, very sobering to look at the opportunities that were missed, really. That's the tragic thing, to blow the whistle on Jimmy Savile and Stuart Hall and save the children and young people that they attacked from so much suffering. And I think the tributes paid both by Lord Hall and Dame Janet Smith to the courage of the survivors um, was very heartfelt because they knew that reliving those awful crimes was very painful for them in giving evidence to this um, inquiry but also now when we're all talking about it and they're having to relive it yet again. And how do you think those survivors will feel about the conclusions that although a number of people had heard rumours, mostly at junior level, they talk about 117 people being aware of, of Jimmy Savile being talked about in this way, there was no evidence that senior managers knew anything. What do you make of that and what do you think that survivors will feel about it? Well, I think it does feel incredible, doesn't it, that with so many people hearing rumours, none of it percolated up into the BBC. But I think I can understand it because, as Dame Janet pointed out, that it is quite a hierarchical organisation and you do save your boss from hearing any messages that you think might rebound back on you and might damage your career. So, and she also said, quite rightly, that there is a difference between evidence, which is, of course, disclosure from someone who's actually been attacked or someone who's witnessed one of these crimes, that's very different from just the general level of rumour and gossip that swirls around and still does swirl around public figures, some of it true, a lot of it false. So it's not very comforting for the survivors to know that the bosses didn't hear what was actually going on because if they had heard, they could have put a stop to it but at least they're being heard now. They're being heard by the Director General, by the BBC Trust, by everybody in any position of power in the BBC who are determined to try and protect today's children and the future children. And that's because the courage of the survivors have at last told the truth to the bosses. You worked at the BBC for many years. Is the culture that she described about fear and deference towards celebrities one that you recognise? Yes, and you find it everywhere. You find it in all the broadcasters. You find it in our glossy celebrity magazines. Uh, people turn into uh, some sort of magic, iconic figure the moment they become famous. And what we've got to do is educate our kids and make sure they understand that just because someone's famous doesn't mean that they're reliable or honest or safe. And we've got to protect people from the culture of celebrity, which I think is everywhere in Britain today. And many of the, the young women who came forward, and young men as well, uh, say that they were treated as, as if they were a bit of a nuisance and often not believed, and certainly their complaints clearly weren't taken high enough. Do you think that is changing? Do you think that survivors who come forward now are treated differently? Well, just have a look at the, the, the stories this week. We've had a bishop in the Church of England convicted of very serious sexual assaults. We've got the awful case in Rotherham which rolls on three more men convicted and this time the police alleged to be part of the corruption and in every case, when the survivors first came forward and asked for help, their cries for help were dismissed. So I would like to say that Childline is there for any child or young person today. 0800 1111. We will take what you say seriously. You can contact us online. We are there for you. So that anybody who feels they won't be hurt or that they're frightened of speaking out, Childline's there for you. 
Dame Janet Smith also talks about the potential threats today, not just in the BBC, but in any organisation, and says no organisation can be completely confident that there's no child abuser working for them. Do you agree with that? And what should the BBC and all organisations, all employers, be doing? An expert once said, monsters don't get near children, nice men do. And paedophiles will use every method in their power to manipulate organisations and indiv individuals so that they can get close to children. And that's what organisations, voluntary organisations, statutory organisations, companies, whatever they are, religions, local councils, be aware that paedophiles will do their best to get close to children. That's what they try to do and they will use any method to silence those children and get what they want. Dame Esther Ransom, we really appreciate your time this afternoon. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Pleasure. Thank you.